Good morning. Welcome to Worship Online with St. Mark Lutheran Church. Today is July 19th, 2020. It's the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. It's good to be gathered together and good to be worshiping together. Now let us continue to prepare for worship with the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have received grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. I have, have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other flock. I know not one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Excuse me. Now let's say the psalm together, shall we? Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me, and you have delivered me from the pit of death. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent people seeks my life. They have not set before set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your hand handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. A reading from Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if, you, but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery, to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. So I consider the sufferings of this present time not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. 
The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. So he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. And he answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, do you remember last week and I said we have this tendency when we hear parables of Jesus to create categories and then we put people in those categories that correlate to the parable and we make sure that the category that we're in is the good category and then we let everybody else kind of fall in and fill in the gaps wherever we think they would be naturally going the category they'd naturally be fitting into do you remember that okay here's another great example of that right this is one of those really really um, great texts that has the potential to lead us down a dangerous dangerous path because in this text we are set up to create those categories we're set up because what we do is in our own lives uh, we tend to ask the question why does why, why do bad things happen to good people and why do good things happen to bad people Right? Why, why, why do bad things happen to me? The question really we ought to be asking, and this is going to come back around, okay? The question we ought to be asking is, why do good things happen at all? The, the text tells us weeds are coming up. Why do good things happen? Well, when we're asking that, Part of what we're doing, even if we aren't consciously thinking about it, somewhere in the back of our mind, we're going, but I'm, but I'm wheat. So I'm looking forward to the day when Christ comes and separates the weeds from the wheat. Where Christ comes and takes this bad stuff out of existence and all that's going to be left will be the good stuff which by the way i'll be a part of because that's the category i put myself into we look for the day when we will be spared we look for the time when the pain comes to an end and trust me i get it i, I get it right now especially we spend a lot of time thinking now about when will things be normal again? When, when will this be over, right? There, it's almost as though 
we're the, the end of the pandemic, it's kind of like our own little worldly version of Christ coming back. When things are going to be okay again. When, when, when is this all going to be over? When, when our lives can get back to normal, to the goodness that we, that we remember them being, and all the bad stuff is going to be gone. When can we get, get back to that? So I understand, and we understand, just how difficult uh, this text is, how easy it is for us to fall into looking ahead to, I want that time to come when Jesus is going to make it better again. Because that's sort of where we are right now. But I want you to pump the brakes on that a little bit. And I want you, particularly on the categories stuff, and I want Jesus to come to make it all better for me or for us or for us who are in the category of the wheat. And I want you to remember what I said to you last week. That those categories are dangerous because the danger is we lump people into them and that's where we think they belong and that's where we think they stay. And I said the reality is we bounce back and forth. We are all over the place. And that's why God is wasteful, generous with mercy and grace. Because <laughs> God has to be. It, it is the same thing in this text. Okay. Some days we are weeds and some days we are wheat. And that is the case for every single human being on earth. And if you doubt me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a, a quick story. I'll, I'll try to make it a quick story, right? So there was a, a, a gentleman, his name uh, was Fritz Hober, and he lived in Germany in the, in the early 1900s. And one of the things that Fritz figured out how to do was he figured out how to make ammonia from the air we breathe. And in doing that, he developed, he, it, it led to the development of fertilizers, right? Cheap, easily accessible, easy to produce fertilizers. His discovery literally helped to feed millions, billions of people. Wheat, right there, in the, he is in the wheat category. But one of the things that happened was that he also developed a way in World War I to blow chlorine gas on enemies. And the man who had developed a way to feed billions <laughs> also developed a way to kill millions. Fritz Hober died before he learned that another of his creations, Zyklon B, was used, uh, was uh, an effective rat poison, helped to uh, control the pest population. He died before learning that Zyklon B was one of the preferred gases in Nazi gas chambers. And Fritz Hober was a Jew. Weeds and wheat, we have to be careful about how quickly we, we categorize people, good or bad. We have to be careful how quickly we label them as a sinner, as subversive, as domestic terrorist. We have to be careful when we start labeling individuals and groups 
and putting them into cubby holes. This is where you belong. This is who you are. You are this category. You are lesser of a person. You are more of a person. You are less worthy. You are more worthy. We do it. It's happening all around us. If you have any doubt, all you have to do is turn on the news. It's happening all around us. We read this parable and we think this parable is about the weeds that the devil has planted. This parable is about the harvest. It's not about the evil that exists. It is about what God is doing about evil. It is what God is doing in the midst of evil. The parable is about God's harvest, the salvation of humanity through Christ's righteousness. Again, don't get me wrong. The threat of weeds in God's garden is great. The reality of sin is a reality. Sin is present. It is destructive, but it is present and destructive in all of us, in all of us. We were created by the merciful love of God. We were not created to be condemned, but to be saved, for it would have profited us nothing to be born had we not also been redeemed. Sound any bit vaguely familiar? God sees in us the weeds and the wheat. It is why on Sunday morning before worship, when I say we let's prepare for worship with the order for confession and forgiveness, we do that as an acknowledgement of our own weediness of our own sinfulness, of our need for God's grace, for God's mercy, for God's harvest to sort out the sin, the weeds, the evil, for God's spirit to be at work in our lives, calling us to repentance and to lives of justice and service and compassion in the name of the living Lord. The story of Fritz Hober is a haunting story because his life is our life. It's just magnified. It's just more intense. We are grateful for a God who continues to be present with us, calling us out of the weeds, fertilizing us with good fertilizer, building us up so that we may, may be means of love and grace and compassion in God's field, in God's world. That is what God is calling us to do. It is how God is at work in us, through us, and for us. So that we don't get lost in the weeds, but may be fed with God's wheat the bread of life. Amen.
living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness, that our witness may be faithful to your intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the gift of new birth. Renew the earth, sky, and sea, so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, teach us your ways that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family, now torn apart by our fearful and warring ways. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and all who suffer in any way. We lift up all those who are in any need. We pray for them now in the silence of our hearts or aloud on our lips. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for the safety of those who travel. We pray for those who cannot take the rest they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places and saints close to us. Gather us with them on the day of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace with one another. Peace be with you all. Build us up, Lord, build us up. Set in a strong foundation, lead us to do your holy will. Form and shape your new creation, build us up, Lord, build us up, as we guide and Help us to share your love with the world, every sister, every brother. Growing in Christ, we plant seeds for the kingdom. We follow in faith what's begun. Lord, set in your hearts.
the power of your word to spread the news of your Son. Build us up, Lord, build us up. Let our lives reflect your glory. Cast away all our doubts and fears. Help us tell the world your story. Build us up, Lord, build us up. Help us bear good fruit for you. Lord, give us vision and keep us sure. Grant us faith that's steadfast and true. Growing in Christ, we plant seeds for the kingdom. We follow in faith what's begun. Lord, set in our hearts the power of your word to spread the news of your Son. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. God, our peace and our strength, we pray for our nation and the world as we continue to face uncertainties around coronavirus. Protect the most vulnerable among us, especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to healthcare workers, especially as their work puts them at great risk. Guide us and our leaders as we consider how best to continue to respond in our families, congregations, workplaces, and communities. Be with us in these days when gathering together as often as we would like is not possible. When we must be apart for reasons of safety, we trust that you surround us with your sheltering wings. Encourage us in connecting as we are able, reaching out to our neighbors in need, and being persistent in prayer. Give us courage to face these days, not with fear, but with compassion, concern, and acts of service, trusting that you abide with us always, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm.